You know, Friday is officially April Fool's Day, so you might have a good gag planned, but it probably won't match the hijinks of YouTube's natural-born pranksters. Their over-the-top stunts have garnered millions of YouTube followers, but do they ever cross the line in the name of good fun? My Nightline co-anchor Dan Harris sat down with the pranksters for our series, Social Stars. Ooh. Yes, this is a grown man playing with a rubber snake. A snake. But for him and his compatriots, it is a serious and lucrative business. Today we're really bad beekeepers. Go that way! No! No! They actually do this for a living. They are Roman Atwood, Dennis Brody, and Vitaly Zdorovetsky. Three YouTube stars who call themselves the natural born pranksters. Oh my god, that's a, oh my god, do you want to give me a what? Why do you like pranks so much? Oh man, it's the, it's that reaction, it's the adrenaline, it's the uh somebody needs to do it. Somebody needs to do it. We are not talking about high culture here. Their antics range from the boyishly silly. Tell me if this stinks. To the edgy and controversial. So cute, but they, they just won't stop crying. They find humor in the unlikeliest of situations. Where is the line? Him and I know the line. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know the line. He steps over the line. Is there a moral ethical line? Um, well, I think that's what, uh, you know, he would go as far as um, blowing up his kid in his video, right? I've done that. You still love me, right? Pushing the limits has paid off big time for these professional pranksters. They each have multiple YouTube channels with more than 29 million subscribers among them, racking up nearly 4 billion total views, even landing Roman on the Forbes list of top earning YouTube stars. So I'm getting the natural born pranksters right now. They've also found themselves on the world stage. That streaker during the 2014 World Cup final, that was Vitali. I got my glitz on, uh, socks, and then I just, I went for it. Uh, As you jumped over, were you freaking out just a best, little bit? The best adrenaline I ever had. So I literally had never felt like this. I had the tingles around. I was like, all the flashes, everything, and I knew so many people are going to see this. So I went to jail for an hour in Brazil and uh, paid a $100 bail, and I was out. Go. You could say they're the jackass for millennials. How much inspiration do you draw from the jackass? I just remember saying, like, I'm going to do this one day. I know I can do something just like this um, in that same arena. And like the jackass crew before them, the pranksters are now taking their act to the big screen. Their first film is called Natural Born Pranksters, and it lands in theaters, fittingly, on April Fool's Day. Yeah, I can do whatever I want. When you guys got together to start planning these pranks, how does that process go? Oh, uh, it was brutal. I think we, we ended up with 400, 400. pranks. And, and the movie has about 32, 30, 32, 32 pranks. pranks. You gotta go through the legal process. They say no a lot. Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. Yvonne had a very healthy pregnancy. Everything was great. Uh, One prank that is sure to raise eyebrows, this scene where a pregnant woman due to deliver any day George. introduces her husband to their surprise bundle of joy. Is this your baby? Was meaning to talk to you? But it's that's one of the, the greatest bits in the whole movie. It's so difficult to find it's like that a year of specific to find a... Um, accomplice, someone that's about to have their baby um, <laughs> and also willing to um, set, their husband up. set their husband up. You don't want to hug your baby? Eve, Eve, oh. Oh, I just got the I just got the text. Oh, <laughs> I actually have to go to the bathroom. Accomplices setting people up just part of the fun, like when this woman in on the joke leaves her boyfriend to go use the porta potty. A fake drunk driver erratically takes the place by storm. Holy Shock. Oh my God. So sorry. And then relief when it turns out it was all a joke. <laughs> But sometimes these punchlines can fall flat, hey. extremely flat. 
even dangerously so. The pranksters have found themselves... What are you doing, bro? ...in some pretty hairy situations. What are you doing in my car? Getting gas? Get the f*** out of my car! Ow! They've even found themselves in handcuffs. Let go! American police. It's actually a prank. Yo, camera! On the ground now. Have you ever been doing a prank where you thought, I'm going to get hurt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a time in Finland. <laughs> the prank was we're kidnapping a woman in front of people, and we put her in the trunk. <laughs> Why did you think you were going to get hurt during that? Well, well you uh, we wanted... nose got cracked. <laughs> Some guy was trying to fight us to get into the trunk. Mito, Mito! It's intense. That's the first time I ever had police grab their guns. <laughs> <laughs> Good joke. Yeah. Good, good joke. Yeah. Is there a prank you would not pull? Uh, when we were in Washington, D.C., I was going to jump to the White House, the White House wall. But Over I, the I, fence into the White House? Yeah, yeah. yeah. ding dong ditch the White yeah, House. Yeah, but I, I couldn't do it. I can't do it because I'm not a citizen, and I know I'll get deported immediately. <laughs> but when I get my citizen, White House. But as crazy and at times potentially offensive as these pranks can be, the pranksters themselves insist it is all in good fun. <laughs> And they point out that sometimes their stunts perform a public service. Like giving food to the homeless. <laughs> and they fit my little hands, yeah! They like to think of themselves as just three oversized children making people laugh and trying not to get hurt in the process. Lots of beans, run! For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in New York. Just a joke.